Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of City Skylines. Today we are going to be talking about the secrets to developing successful neighborhoods in City Skylines. And the reason we're going to be talking about this is because there's really a lot of factors that go into building out a large city and building out small little sections within your city. And so one of the things that I come across a lot with new players is they kind of just copy their pattern going all the way around, which isn't bad. The problem though is a lot of them experience traffic or they experience lackluster growth. And so one of the things that we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be building out this large area, but we're gonna be focusing on sustainability as well as financial productivity. And what I mean by that is how are we gonna make this neighborhood be able to pay for its own maintenance liabilities? And this is something that a lot of real cities don't pay attention to, especially in North America. Um, North America is largely fueled by new growth. And so city planners will have large maps for their cities, 90% low density residential, and they will rely on new growth to help fund their current maintenance liabilities, which is not sustainable long-term, especially as our cities stop growing as much. And so what we're gonna do, we are gonna try to segment this off. And so we're actually gonna do something fun I saw city planner plays do. And so what we're gonna do, I want to do a small commercial, probably high density residential in this area. And then we are going to do some low density residential going all the way around this lake, probably over here as well. I don't think we're going to go all the way around it. I kind of want to do like a nature reserve. I don't think we're going to do it on this episode, but I, I kind of want to get at least something over here. I feel like this lake would be a nice location for us to do like maybe some camping or something like that. And then we are gonna do some more high density kind of mixed in here, butting up against that train line. And the reason we're doing this is because we're gonna do a train stop right here in the middle. I wanna do something big. On the other side, we're gonna do another high density neighborhood kind of going all the way down, butting up against the road. Then we're gonna have this cut across. Probably gonna have this one go all the way down though. I think we're gonna do a service center down here with all this uh, kind of crossover. And then we are gonna do another low density and high density kind of mixed use area in here. I think we're actually gonna draw this one all the way down. So this one is gonna be kind of more of a mixed bag. And so the reason we're going to be developing like this is because the high density will actually help to fund the low density. And this is something that a lot of city planners and city officials don't really think about is that the tax base for low density residential tends to not be enough to be able to fund their maintenance liabilities like road, water, sewage, especially long-term and so a lot of these cities are sitting on these huge maintenance maintenance issues that they're never really gonna be able to pay for. Higher dense uses within your developments can definitely increase that tax base. And this is really where that financial productivity comes in. And so let's go ahead and jump right in. So the first thing we need to do is focus on our road layout. So what I wanna do, we are going to have this road come across. We're probably gonna to have to kind of play around with this a little bit. So I think what we'll do is we'll cut this out and then I'll have it kind of meander around and connect up right here just to create a little bit more space in here. All right, so I ended up having this just go straight. I felt like it was just gonna look a little more realistic rather than having it kind of curve and then curve back. And then it does leave a really nice large space in here for us to do trash service or something like that. And so now what we're gonna do is focus on our road layout. One of the things that I've done in the past, I'm not a huge fan of putting any sort of zoning on main collectors. I feel like it's a really bad idea and it's something that a lot of cities get wrong. And the reason they get it wrong is because it makes it so that it is not pedestrian friendly whatsoever. Whenever you have like a large four or six lane road, it is not designed for people to be walking on. It's designed for cars. And so now what we're gonna do, we are going to bring this up and then we are gonna bridge across our rail line. Let's go like that. We're gonna come all the way down. And the reason we did that is because we could have done a crossing. Having a bridge though makes it so that this is unpeated. We are still having some crossings in here. And so I just didn't want to do one right there. I feel like it was just a little bit of a better location for us to go like that. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and draw this across because this is going to be a main road. So we're going to want to go like right here. We are going to connect this one up. We're going to go like that. And then let's go ahead and bring this down and then let's do another one. So what I'm thinking, we are gonna have this road come across, we're gonna have this road come across. So what we'll need to do for those first is kind of level it out. It is kind of on a slope. So what I'm gonna do is right click right there and then have this come all the way down and we wanna make sure we are in the correct location. I kind of in the correct location. <laughs> we are still gonna do an or area for this area, but I'm just kind of putting it off right now. Or areas aren't super popular and so all right, so now that we have that, what we can do is bridge these roads across. And we are probably going to have to use tram roads for these because we are going to have tram access in here, which is super important. So we are going to connect this up, go like that. And then we are going to bring this across, go like that. Let's make sure that that looks okay. Yeah, it does. Let's make sure this one looks good. Yes, it does. Perfect. We don't have any weird bumps in there. 
So now that we have that, let's go ahead and bring this across. And I want to delete these real quick, connect this up. Let's have this go straight just so that we kind of have a, a goal for this. Okay, and so now that we have that, we can come back over here. And so we want this road to continue on. And we'll probably turn it in like right about here. And we want to go perpendicular with this road. So what I'm going to do is actually draw a road out so that we can kind of get this in a little bit better if we go like that. Perfect. And so in order to get this across, what we'll need to do is do a bridge because we want to keep that tram access in here. So we'll go like this, bring this down. We'll probably go like right there and then go up three, go across and then go down. We want to make sure that that looks okay. So it's definitely a little steep on this side. I don't think it's too steep though. I don't particularly like how it kind of dives right into that intersection. I think what we'll do is try to go in from the other side because then that way we can go like that. Yeah, that's a, definitely a little bit better. Yeah, much better actually. And so now we're good. Let's make sure that we have enough clearance on that rail line, which it says that we do. Let's um wait and see for a train line to come through. Yeah, you know what, that actually, uh, it's we're gonna act like it's okay. The game says it's okay. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and upgrade this road going all the way down. And we can't have it cross the line right there. So what we're gonna do is just bridge this down here and then connect up with our other tram road, which right here, we're kind of having issues too. This is definitely gonna be something that we're gonna have to deal with. And so maybe we will actually have this one kind of loop back. I think that that actually works. So we will go back to our decorative trees and bicycle lanes and kind of loop this back. I didn't even think about that. So we'll go like that. And then we'll have the tram line come down here and kind of loop around, which I think will be good. So I think that that right there is probably good for our main collectors. I don't really want to get too crazy with it. And this is something that I kind of touched on on here. Um, collectors and the overuse of wide roads is something that a lot of cities get wrong. And this is why a lot of the underlying value and ends up getting kind of destroyed. And so now what I'm going to do is go ahead and lay out the rest of our grids. I'm going to do a nice little shopping center in here. I'm going to do probably a suburbanized area around this lake. And then, like I said before, we are going to do more of a high density area in here, high density in there. We're going to definitely do some low density in here as well, though. And then this is all going to be high density. So I'm going to go ahead and get that road layout done. And then we can start kind of looking at everything and seeing what we're working with. All right. And here is our layout. And so you may at first notice that it's a little more sporadic. And this is one of the ways that you can increase complexity on your roads and just get cars to go a little bit slower. Whenever you have very predictable grids, like very square layouts, it increases cars to go a little bit faster, which in an auto centric society is good, but for a more productive pedestrian friendly neighborhood, it is not good. And so it's better to have like turns and have your grids kind of broken up. I did leave some space in here. I think we're going to have to add in a small university. And then we're going to have to add in a couple schooling areas, probably a couple elementaries. So this is going to be our low density. This is all going to be high density, high density. This is going to be a shopping area. This is going to be high density mixed use with a low density area in the back. And one of the things we have to really consider is the fact that we have this air airfield here. This would definitely put downward pressure on the land value for this area. And that's why I don't really want to do any um, residential in this area. I don't know about you, but I really would want to live right below, you know, a flight path. It would be really loud, especially like in the middle of the night, if it was a really busy airport, it would just not be great. All right, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and figure out our transportation first. So I did kind of play around with our tram layout. So I had our tram come in here and then it actually cuts through the backside of this neighborhood. So this whole thing is surrounded. And then I had it come up here, turn, and then kind of meander through the high density area. And then also come down here to provide a little bit of access. We would want to create a couple focal points for this. So we definitely want to do a train line. And then I think we want to do another small transportation hub, maybe back here. This little spot right here probably looks good. And then we definitely want to get some metro in here as well, since this is going to be a high density area. We know we have a couple underground metro lines kind of running through here, but then we also have our large airport kind of metro sunken station over here, which I think would be really cool to uh, get connected. I really like seeing all these people. I think that's just so cool. So what we're going to do, we are going to go to the content creator packs. I want to do this large underground section. So the parallel underground. And what I'm thinking is we're going to demolish this one and put this one in here. And what it's going to allow us to do is kind of separate these lines since this line is kind of already kind of long. It comes down here, connects up all the way over here. And so what we're what we'll do is go in here and demolish this. And we need to kind of pause first because we're going to be really messing some stuff up. And then let's put in our new one now. So if we go like right there and it does kind of ruin our, our path a little bit, we're going to come back through and probably just do our best to connect that, even though I, I think a lot of it is just uh, going to be stuck. Yeah, it's OK right there. 
At least now, I mean, there's a little bit of a walking path they can get over to the tram stop, which is good. So let's get back into our underground tram line and we need to uh, now connect this up. And so now what we can do is grab this, have it turn this way, and then have it actually connect up to our underground, sunken underground station over here, which I think is really great. So now we've provided kind of double access over here, which is fantastic. And so we're gonna have a train line going up the middle. We would definitely wanna provide a little bit of metro access to that. So maybe we'll do a metro station in here and I wanna use one of the new ones from the railroads of Japan. I think that these are just really cool assets. And they are kind of big, so we're definitely gonna to have to try to figure out something if we do that big one. I do like these, so this one's kind of cool. So small metro terminal, that one looks good. Let's see how many metro we have. So we have an elevated one, which this looks actually really cool. I haven't even looked at all these yet. I think um, the Railroads of Japan uh, content creator pack is definitely worth it, especially if you're into transportation stuff and everything. Um, so this one's actually kind of cool. I like that a lot. I think that that one's going to be definitely my main one from now on. And these are going to be the train stations. So we are going to definitely do a train station in there as well. I think this one would be good if we could just snake that. Man, this one would actually be great. So let's look at our train station and see what we're working with for this. So if we could get a small road in here, what I'm thinking is probably just a regular two lane. Let's go back above ground, go like this, and then we will demolish just a small section of this and just have it kind of loop around. We don't need to get too crazy with this. We'll go like that. And then what I'm thinking is we could probably put that large Metro one right here. And then what it'll do is just provide, make it look a little more industrious. It's like an office park too. I think that this looks really cool, especially for a metro stop. So it's like an office building. And then what we're going to do is kind of sneak this in the back. And so now let's grab our large ground station. I'm thinking that this one's probably going to be good. So if we go like right there, can we sneak that past? I don't think we can. It's going to be really tight. So maybe if we bring that road out just a little bit more, let's move this back and then let's bring this road out just a smidge more. We don't need to get crazy with it, just enough to provide us enough room. So if we go like right there, I'm thinking, and then come back, go like this. What we can do is grab our station now and move this back. And that should be enough to clear it. Yeah, look at that, perfect. And so now we can grab our train line, have this go straight, and then let's go ahead and just kind of curve it in a little bit. Yeah, if we go like that, perfect. And then that way we can do the same thing on this side, just kind of curve it a little bit. We don't need to get crazy with it. We just needed it to have enough room to kind of bypass this. And so this definitely is a bypass some um, train line too, which I think that this is an awesome looking train station. I really like the look of that a lot. I think that these are fantastic assets. I like that that little office park is there too. We'll probably do office around the side of this. So now that we have that, let's go back and look at our other metro stops that we want to do. I think we're going to do some of these smaller ones in here. So I really liked this one, but it just I think it's going to be too big. Maybe we can just get some of these smaller ones in here. So we got that connected right there. What I'm thinking is we will grab this. Let's move this. We connect up right there. We have tram access. We really don't need to get a metro stop right there. I think that that would be kind of a waste. But we do want to turn it this way and have one kind of connect up right here. I'm thinking we might even be able to fit the big one in here. Could we get this in there? Let's see if we can play around with this a little bit. So if we delete these, go like that and then put this right there. How does that look? Oh yeah, look at that. I think that this looks awesome. And then that way what we can do is just kind of connect this up, go like that, and then we can turn this into a, a public space, maybe do some shopping around it. And this is really where, like in order to get people to utilize your transit, you need to make it make them you know destinations. You want people to go to where these stops are. So we're gonna go ahead and put room right there as well, since this is gonna be a high density area. So we'll have a stop come up here, there, and then turn, come up here, and we'll probably have it come over here at some point we would we really don't need it to right now but maybe we'll even upgrade this into a dual one at some point um th right now there is a transfer right there so i don't know if that would be entirely necessary but because you really got to think like would the city spend the money on on this stuff and a lot of times it's no but they are good to have so we'll go ahead and go like that and then what we'll do is turn this this way go like that and then now we can connect that up fantastic and then let's grab our metro line tool and we want it to go right here, right there, right there, and right there, and then loop it back and complete the line right there, fantastic. 
And before we hit play, let's go ahead and check out that new line. So let's turn this to white. And I think the next episode we do, we're going to do a transportation episode because having all these green is just kind of confusing. I mean, now we have, so let's do red. And then what we're going to do is turn this to what I'm thinking. I normally do the 500s. I don't know if that's going to be entirely necessary though. Maybe we'll do this 400 one. I think this looks pretty good. Oh man, look at that. 660. That's crazy. I didn't even see that. That is massive. I don't know if that would be necessary. So now let's go ahead and hit play. Let's see how that populates. Again, we don't have any buildings or anything, so there's really no reason to uh, have all that for right now. And then for our train line, what we need to do is just add in a stop. So we will come in here, and I think we're actually going to kind of play around with our stops because right now we have multiple. So if we go into train lines, let's go ahead and delete both of them. And we want this train line to actually go from one of our stops our end of line all the way down. So we want to come down here. We want to make sure that we get into the stop too. So yeah, we come down here, go right there. We want to come all the way up here, stop. We want to now come to our new station, stop. And then we want it to turn, come all the way down here, stop, and then come all the way back. And so now we're going to have some great access in here, which is going to be fantastic. And then we will complete it. And so now people would have a pretty quick way. I mean, this would probably even be faster than, than the Metro because it's more of a direct route. But so now let's come in here. Let's do this, this brown one. I actually really like that. So let's change the color now. Let's go to like a blue. I, I like blue. I think it's a good color. So now that we have that, we can hit play. And we'll kind of play around with that and see um, how it works. Because what I'm hoping is this should have like a bypass lane in the middle. But it should really boost up our overall use of this line now that we have both the downtowns kind of connected up because they had to do a transfer before and and now they don't so now you'd be able to get from downtown to downtown pretty quick i mean there's really only two stops in between versus metro you'd have to kind of go all the way around it would take a while so now we need to come through and do our tram lines let's go like this so we want to try to make this a little easy for people so what we're going to do we're going to go ahead and create a line right there and then we're going to come up here stop we're going to come all the way down and then what we will do is we will stop right here, stop right there, stop right there. And the goal of these, you want to have your stops a little bit closer because if you go too far, what happens is people tend not to utilize it as much. And that's really where even in real life, like if the stop is 15 or 20 minutes away, especially Americans, they're, they're not going to walk that much. Like they're just not going to do it. So let's come in here, go like that, go like this. And then loop it all the way around. I decided to do one going all the way around instead of having multiple. I think that having this loop would be really beneficial for the area. And so what we could do is have a secondary line kind of loop the opposite direction. Um, I think maybe we could even just do a smaller one. So maybe we'll come in here, do one on the opposite side and have it come this way. And instead of going all the way around because we already kind of have access, what we're going to do is kind of loop it around halfway. So we'll come this way and then we will go like this. And that way there's a bunch of transfer opportunities for anybody who is trying to get to the other destination but this would at least provide coverage for this area which i think would be good all right and then for that other metro line i did have to redraw it in it's kind of having issues i was trying to move the stop and it just wasn't reading so i decided to uh, kind of give up on it um, now what we need to do we have our transportation in we have our tram lines in which is fantastic let's start focusing on some services so we want to get a hospital in and we want to try to get the hospital in a centralized location. So what I'm thinking is even right here would probably be good right next to that rail line. It's got good transportation. It would be a little bit too loud maybe, but I think it's a, a pretty decent location for it because it's pretty centralized. So if you look at its spread, it gets pretty far out there. Now let's go ahead and go right here. And then what we'll do is do another one down here. So two hospitals. It's a, it's a huge cost, but honestly, you would want to have that coverage in here. So what we're going to do is go like this, and then we will put in that high density police station right next to it. And then we will go ahead and copy that on the other side as well. So we want to do our high density fire station, and then let's do our high density right there. And then what we'll do is just put in some small parking because this is a hospital. You would definitely want to have some parking without parking. You could probably run into some pretty big issues. So we'll go like that all the way across and then let's go ahead and do some back here as well. And then let's do the same thing over here. We'd want to get just a few. We don't need to get crazy with it, but we would want to provide just a little bit of uh, parking, especially I think they use the parking for like their vehicles and stuff. So like they would place the, the ambulances and stuff in there. Now that we have that, let's go ahead and bring this across. I want them to be complete areas. So we'll go like this 
and go like this. That way, I mean, it's kind of closed off, makes it look a little bit better rather than having it kind of open up on either side. I think that looks pretty good. We'll come in here now and just do some small trees. We don't need to get crazy with it. We just want it to look good. So we want to go like this all the way down. Make it look like, you know, the city cares about its uh, hospitals. And you really just goes to show you don't need to get crazy with that. What we could do as well is maybe just come in here and do a couple of these little pink bushes just to give it some color, make it look a little bit better. Now that we have that, so we have all of our primary services, let's go through, do a couple post offices because we know that these would be pretty important. So we'll come in here, let's do one right there. Let's go ahead and do a small post office right there as well. So we got some pretty decent coverage on post offices. And then we would want to get a couple banks. Let's do some of the bigger ones. So we'll do a big bank like right there. And then we're going to do high density over here as well. We'll do a big bank right there. So now we got pretty decent coverage and we don't have to worry about the kind of smaller branches, which I think is good. So we got banks, we got post office, we got all of these. We need to do parks. Let's come in here and I want to do some of our newer parks. So I want to definitely do some of these bigger ones in here. I think that this would be really cool. Let's go ahead and place this right there. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, you know what, I, I think that that looks awesome, especially right in the middle there. And we'll come back through and do some trees. And then let's try to get this bigger one somewhere, maybe even right here. I haven't seen this one yet, so that one actually looks pretty cool. I like it. It's a nice lake. So let's actually put that one more in the middle. This is going to be low density over here, so we want to be kind of careful with the overall look, but... I think that this looks pretty good so far. Now our little area over here is pretty good. We'll probably do maybe a couple more of the small playgrounds. Go like that, go like that. And then let's come through here. Let's do a couple plazas. Yeah, if we go like that, fantastic. Let's do the same thing on this side. And we'll come back through and probably play around with those a little bit more. I mean, I think they look pretty good so far. And then let's do a couple more plazas in here, though I think we're going to do some of the pedestrians, pedestrian area plazas. Maybe we'll go like this. Maybe we'll come back through and just kind of place a bunch of these around. Because again, this is going to be high density, and so you'd want, want to get it to look good. So I think that looks pretty good so far. A lot of the parks I come back through after we're decorating and everything kind of play around with. So I don't want you guys to think that these are like their final locations. They're not, and that's really where like you, you know, as you start building out more, you'll kind of get more of an eye for this and you know what you want. This is already looking pretty good. So I want to do the university there. We need to get a couple schooling compounds because our elementary is already lacking. And I think we're going to do one of the, the newer elementaries, this one that came with the heart of Korea because it has higher capacity and I actually really like the layout of it a lot. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. This one already has like a whole little schooling area kind of playground ish, but I like the idea of having a little bit more around it. And then we will just do a couple trees, kind of fill in the space, maybe even do a fence around it if, if I mean, you could. And then let's do another one of those on this side. So we definitely want to get it in our low density area if we could, because this is really what's going to kind of boost up the land value in this area. Low density areas tend to be kind of struggle with land value. Yeah, that looks pretty good as well. And then we'll come back through and do a couple trees again. It's really a lot of services now, especially once you get like all the DLCs and everything. It's a lot of stuff you got to pay attention to. Now that we have that, let's go ahead and do our high density high school. So we would want to get a couple of these. And so I want to do like a whole sports compound with this as well. So I think what we'll do, let's go ahead and place this right there. And then what I want to do is have a road come in. Let's actually look at our sports parks first. So we'll come in here and I would like to get, so the community soccer park, definitely. And then let's see if we can do, let's actually do the smaller one. Cause I think the community one's going to be a little bit too big. We'll go like this and then let's do community baseball. You know, those are the two that we normally do. Let's actually do the, the community American football. What we can do is actually move this one over just a little bit and then put in our sports hall and gymnasium, which is always necessary for these areas. And then let's put in a small plaza here in the middle because I think that this will kind of help to bring it all together. Yeah, you know what? I like that a lot. I think that looks fantastic. And so now what we can do is go ahead and connect up some of our paths and stuff. So we would want to connect this up, have it go straight. Let's see, I would like to get one in there, but it looks like we're not going to be able to. Yeah, we'll go like this and just have this go down. And then what we'll do is we'll have this come down as well. So now let's come in here and see if we can get some sort of parking, at least a little bit. We don't need a lot, but especially for high school, the kids kind of get excited for getting their own car and stuff. All right, so now that we have that, let's um maybe put in a dog park over here. Man, we are doing a lot. We're really just, this is going to be a really cool area. I'm excited to see what this looks like when it's all done. 
So I think this looks pretty good. You know, we have some paths kind of going through. I do wish the path connected up, but I think we're going to be kind of stuck there. Nice little schooling compound. We um, need to get another one. <clears throat> so maybe we will come in here. So this is all going to be low density. Maybe we'll make this one a little bit bigger. Let's move that over so we can get the sports hall and gymnasium right next to it. And that way we can actually get a path in there, which would be really cool. And then let's get a community cricket in here since we don't do that enough. And then what I'm thinking is probably that small soccer. We'll go like that. And then let's um, maybe put in one of these bigger parks in here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then let's actually do a couple of the sports parks as well, which we kind of forgot on the other one. So we would definitely want to get a couple of these in there. So now we got basketball. Let's actually see if we can fit basketball over here somewhere. I'm thinking maybe we'll get rid of this and put basketball in there. Yeah, you know what? That looks pretty good. And this actually looks really cool. I like the overall look of this. Um, I do kind of wish that we could maybe get a plaza here in the middle, like maybe even the, the zoo plaza. I just don't think it's going to allow us. Yeah, so it has to be roadside. I don't particularly like the all this empty space. But what we'll do is maybe put a couple trees trees in here and this will be like where kids kind of come and study and, and stuff like that. Looking pretty good. Man, we are definitely, we're really moving. And there we are. And then we can even go into some props and stuff and get some benches, get our little regular benches in there. Yeah, look at that. It's just the little things, you know. A lot of times it doesn't take a lot to get a nice area. But now we got a cricket field, which we um, we definitely don't have a ton of these. And so it's nice to get that in there. And we got another soccer and large playground let's get a couple trees around this too just to you know butter it up a little bit really like these trees i like that they're just they're really big they're they're kind of majestic so now that we have that we have we have a lot so we did our schooling our schooling capacity is way up now our elementary is still pretty far down what we can do is start zoning in some of this so we definitely want to get low density in here what I'm thinking is I'll probably do low density for this whole neighborhood. So I ended up doing low density for this entire neighborhood. And so now let's move on over here. Let's go ahead and unpause so that we can start getting some growth over there. I did end up doing just a small bit of commercial in here just to provide that little neighborhood shop. I'm still unsure of what we're going to do in here. I'm thinking maybe a bigger park would be nice, especially since it's a large kind of community like that. So now in here, what we want is a good mix of high density and office as well as commercial. And the reason we want to do this is because this is really going to provide a lot of value for people living in this area. We're not going to do high density commercial because it creates a ton of noise pollution. And that's something that we just really don't want to have to worry about here. So we're going to do office around here. We're going to do our university in that space. Go ahead and do some more residential in here. We'll probably come back through and do little squares of, of commercial. I think that that would probably be good. Let's maybe do a bigger park right there. I think that that could be good. Do residential around this. So I think that this is pretty good. Maybe we'll do another little row of commercial in there. And then what I want to do is come through here and just do little squares of shops. These would be like your little neighborhood shops. Uh, in real life, these would probably all be mixed use buildings. So you wouldn't have to come through and you would not just have like little corners of shops like this. Um, but you do still tend to see these within cities. And so you'll see like little gas stations and stuff in inner cities and um, just small bits of low density commercial. And so I really like to do this, um, especially for downtown areas. And this is something that we've done quite a bit in the past as well. So we'll go like this. And then so I ended up doing this whole thing as high density commercial or low density commercial. And I think we'll even remove the little middle node, maybe do like a little walkway in there. I think that that could be good. And then let's come over here. So we got office. We don't want to overdo office space. That could be really bad if we get a little too crazy with it. So now we do want to come back through here, we kind of forgot about paths and do link up all these connections and create some connections through here to provide a little more walkability. We really want people to walk as much as possible. And the way we're going to do that is by linking up these connections. And so now let's come through here. Let's go ahead and do our big park. I like this park a lot. I think it it's first off, it's huge. It also provides a way for us to kind of connect up these corners and make it into a bigger park in a really easy kind of fun way. So we'll go like this. And so now all you need to do is go through here and just place some trees. I mean, you don't really need to get too crazy with it. You just want to make it look like it's a large park. So we got a nice, easy little park and that should really boost up a lot of the land value in this area. And we did connect up most of our paths. So what I did, I basically connected up all of our little three-way stops in here. And this is something that I do quite often. I also connected up our outsides as well. And this is to provide a little bit of access around the area as well, which is super important. 
So we'll go like this. And so I think what we're going to do for these little middle sections is kind of like what we did before. So I'm going to have a bike path kind of go all the way through here. And I'm going to have it go over the roads. And then we'll probably even do some pedestrian crossings. What I want to do first, though, is do the rest of our zoning. This is definitely going to take a long time for this to grow. You can see a lot of our demand has already collapsed. And so what we want to do is come over here and finish off our zoning. So we are going to do low density for all of these squares in here. And I could have even done the marquee selection tool instead of this little circle. And this is already looking really cool. I like this look a lot. And so for the outside, what we're going to do is we are going to go like this. But then what I want to do for this area is actually do a height ban because I don't want to get any crazy, crazy tall buildings. So we're going to extend this out and we are going to have the height ban probably go all the way down here. And the reason for that is because it's really going to help us to create more of like a, a step effect with the buildings. So we'll grab that going here, go into policies, go into city planning and go to high rise ban. And basically what that does is it prevents it from reaching level five, which does kind of hurt your city a little bit. Not a whole lot, though. It's not something to really be concerned about. Um, but it is something that you do want to be mindful of is, you know, if you do place a height ban is just remembering that you did place that there. We're going to go ahead and go like this, go all the way around. And so now for this outer section, we are going to do some more high density residential, but we're going to actually have this kind of sprout up and be a little bit larger. And I think for this area, what we'll do is actually choose. I want to do mid-century modern for this. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. So mid-century modern. And then I want to do self-sufficient housing for the high rises because I really like them a lot. Maybe, you know, what, let's do um wall to wall for that section. And then we're going to do self-sufficient for this outer side because that's actually going to help prevent it from getting large, which I think is going to look cool. So let's see if this one, let's maybe drag this district out just right there. Yeah, I think that'll be good. So we'll get a nice mix of mid-century modern and wall-to-wall -wall assets in here, which is actually going to look really cool. Um, I'm pretty excited about seeing this. So we're going to do another little strip of commercial in here. And then let's go back to our low density over here. Let's go ahead and unpause so we can start getting some of this in. And so let's do high density residential. And then let's do some more high density residential in here. And then let's go ahead and do paths as well. Similar to the other side, we kind of forgot about them. So we'll connect up all these little three ways in here. We want to provide that much needed access. We are going to end up doing that path going down though. So we may need to kind of play around with these a little bit. And voila, so we got our zoning over there. And then for over here, I think we are going to do the shopping malls asset. And we're going to actually turn this into kind of larger little shopping district since it's right at the end of that runway. So we'll grab this. We will go all the way down to shopping malls. And then I think we'll even add in a small little unique building in here. So I think what we're going to add is this rail yard shopping center. I think it's a really cool look and I think it's going to help to kind of break up this area a little bit. And so now we will go into our shopping centers. Let's go ahead and go all the way around. And we are going to do some office space in here as well, just because that really having all the shopping around provides a huge amenity for people who are at work. You know, maybe you're just going out to lunch and you're going to run over to a little restaurant or something like that. It's going to be a really cool look. I'm actually excited to see how this all turns out, like having all the different sections. And then let's go ahead and do some paths up that speed since we are going to be building for quite some time. We got a lot going on here. So we got this all built out. We have some of these buildings coming in, which is good. The low density is definitely going to take a bit like the, the land value in these areas to, isn't as strong. So I think for this area, we're going to do self-sufficient because I really don't want to get just a mix of these kind of random houses in there. I don't think it looks as good. And we got these ones coming in. Let's go ahead and look at our new assets. And you know, it's so funny. I um, forgot I clicked the wrong one. So we want the Brooklyn and Queens. <laughs> so we uh, backpedal. Um, you guys probably caught it before I did. So industrial evolution is just the industries areas. The Brooklyn and Queens content creator pack is how we're going to get those little squares in there. I, I had gotten confused because we already had a couple of them but now we're going to end up losing a lot of these buildings which does kind of suck but um it's going to come back the way that we want it which is going to look really cool so we're getting a little bit of growth over here too which is nice to see we even got this over here next to the park which is fantastic and so now let's go ahead and start working on this side so the bird song district this is going to be another high density maybe we'll even just extend this one over here i think that that could be good so we'll go like this extend it across and then we'll turn this into just a high density uh residential office park area what we can do is put this servicing services office in here and i actually think that this is a pretty cool building it's really large i do wish that it kind of sat a little bit better in there 
So I think what we may do is maybe push this forward a little bit. So if we grab this, get rid of that road and then grab this and then push it up. And then we want to get it like right in the middle or one off. And there's really not a whole lot we can do about that. But now we will connect this back up and let's actually go back to the one with bike paths. That would be pretty important. And then let's remove zoning all the way around this. And so now we have like a nice little focal point for this area, which is going to look really cool. And so let's do another commercial area for this section and we'll probably remove it on that middle side again because I think that that's going to provide a nice clean look. And then I think we'll do a small little park up there and then let's unpause. Let's get some of these shops in here, which would be super important. And then we just need to do paths. And I think that's going to be it for our zoning. We definitely will probably come back through and maybe shift a couple of them around, especially as we start to see what everything looks like. But we still have a lot of room for us to uh, get some buildings in and really get some stuff going that's going to look cool. All right, so we are getting our buildings growing in. We definitely need to let it run for a little bit and then we need to kind of identify if we're having any issues. You can see this, this whole train traffic in here is kind of causing a problem with these roads. We may need to, I'm thinking, get rid of this one because I don't like having this intersection right there. I don't think that that is smart. Let's go into junctions though and see. So we got a light in there, which we definitely wouldn't want. And we wouldn't want this light on the other side either because it's actually causing a huge backup over this rail line. This would just definitely be a problem. And this is one of the things with train crossings you really got to pay attention to. Because we have so much train traffic coming through here, it's actually causing a little bit of a backup. What I'm hoping though is now that those junctions are gone, we should be a little bit better. Yeah, you know, that's already a lot better. And it looks like our little backup over here is kind of getting better. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to let this run for a little bit. Um, hopefully, I'm guessing our traffic issues here will probably be fixed. We may need to turn that into a bridge or something. Because um, I think having these connections that close are just causing kind of an issue. In my test builds, I didn't do these diagonal roads. It was kind of something that I decided to do while we were building this out. Overall, I think it's going to look really cool. We are going to have some notifications and some issues pop up until all the residents come in. And so what I'm going to do is just place it on a camera and we will watch this all sprout up. Okay, so we're getting quite a bit of growth. We're definitely still experiencing some issues in our low density areas, which we'll work on here in a bit. We are having some issues related to trash. And so what I wanna do is start working on that little trash facility we were gonna do. So what we're gonna do is grab a small road and we're going to have this come out. We really don't need to have a huge complex for this. We just need it to be large enough to fit a couple of our buildings. And so what I want to do, I think we're going to go in here and I want to go into the content creator packs and we're going to utilize this eco-friendly incineration plant. Really like this building. I think it looks cool. It came with the heart of Korea content creator pack. And it's something that I've actually had people kind of comment on. Ooh, so we, if we go one more over, then what we can do is place a second one. Yeah, look at that. Perfect. And then let's go ahead and do another road and we're going to do a recycle center because we believe in recycling. So we'll go like that. Fantastic. And so now we have some trash services over here. It's kind of out of the way, so it's really not too crazy. It is right next to our little airfield, though, so we'd have to be mindful of that. We're experiencing some abandonment related to not enough workers, and this is something that's pretty common whenever you build out this large of an area. We're still kind of waiting for these to kind of sprout in. And so one of the things you can do if you're experiencing something like this is try to boost up the land value a bit. So what we'll do is place down just a few more parks thinking maybe like a dog park and then let's come over here probably do the same thing do a dog park and then let's do a playground across the street from that and then i think we are going to do a larger park in here 
So what we'll do is let's actually remove that and then do our park in here. This is again gonna really help to kind of boost up that value quite a bit. So we will do a city park. Let's do our main entrance right there. And then let's do a couple little side gates. We'll do one right there, one right there. And then this will actually promote people to kind of cross over, which is gonna be good. So let's actually move this one up just a little bit more and then sprout this across. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. And then that way what we can do is grab this, have it connect up right there in the middle and have it come back here and do another entrance. So let's go ahead and redraw that in so that we can kind of line it up a little bit better. Yeah, if we go like that, perfect. And so now we can come in here, let's do a couple plazas and then let's do our info booth near the beginning. We'll go like right there. Let's go ahead and grab a path, have it come off over here, come off over here. Let's do another one right there. Let's do the park cafe. And we'll probably do a tiny park next to that as well. Let's do a rest or a restroom. We'll do a restroom over here as well. The little chest park. And then let's do a climbing frame as well. We'll go like that. And then let's just do a couple small gazebos. And I think that that's probably going to be good. I don't really want to go too crazy. We already got quite a bit. So now what we'll do is do some trees around. And I'm just going to do these live oaks kind of scattered. I don't want to do too high of a concentration for these. And voila. And so now what we can do is come in here. Let's do just a couple rocks. We don't, again, need to get too crazy with this. Just want to get some visual kind of appeal in there. Yeah, you know what? I think that this looks pretty good. There are still some spaces that I think would benefit from some trees. So maybe we'll come in here, do some trees along the path a little bit. You really just want to get rid of all the empty space. It just doesn't look as good. Yeah, you know what? That looks pretty good. I like the look of that. And I think we may even add in another little gazebo right there. Yeah, you know what? I think that's a pretty good park. And it really should help with lane value in this area. Yeah, it definitely boosted it up a little bit, so we should hopefully start to get some some growth. It's definitely hard though. Like you can see even around the schooling area, we're not getting a ton of growth. And so this is something that we're probably just gonna have to wait for the rest of this to kind of build out. And you can see we're still kind of experiencing issues with the trains. So I think what we're gonna do is kind of play around with this. Let's delete this and do a bridge across because I think this is just gonna be much better for this area. Yeah, you know what, that looks a little bit better. And then what we'll do is grab our tram line, go like right there, and then we'll probably just connect this up. Yeah, I think this will be good. So if we go straight, yeah, that looks pretty good. And it kind of moved this a little bit further back, which is good. So let's actually go back. We want to use one with bike lanes. Yeah, trees and bicycle lanes. So let's upgrade that. Go all the way across because we have bike lanes for all of them. It looks like this road we may have forgot bike lanes. We want to try to encourage bicycling as much as possible. And so now with that crossing, it's going to do a couple things. So it's going to really help the trains to not have to stop, but then it's going to really help this uh, traffic to not have to stop. So this should really help out quite a bit. And moving the intersection back, having those uh, like too close together, you don't have intersections right next to each other, just causes a lot of problems. You can hear all the dings from people upgrading. And this is the new Brooklyn Queens pack. I think this looks really cool. I like the look of this a lot. And I've actually been to Brooklyn before and it's a really vibrant neighborhood. I like it a lot, like the brick buildings and everything. A lot of people walking around everywhere. It's a really lively area to visit. I, I really enjoy it a lot. Brooklyn is a cool city. And so we still gotta wait for a little bit for this to kind of grow in. Our low density is definitely kind of struggling. And it's just something that we're going to have to deal with until this kind of grows out. Once demand kind of diminishes for these this large, for this high density, then our low density will tend to come in. Even in my test builds, it took a little while for us to get that going. So while we're waiting, let's go ahead and work on this area. So we have this metro going around. Let's go ahead and have this road kind of extend across and then connect up right there just so that we can kind of close that off. But then let's look for a unique building to fit in here. So I think what we're gonna do, we are going to upgrade this road around to a pedestrian road, and then we will grab this and have it connect up over here. And this is something that you can do in this area as well, is go through here and upgrade some of these roads as pedestrian roads, like every other one. And this is something that you even see in cities where they'll come through and make this more like a restaurant kind of area. You do need to be mindful though, if you're gonna do pedestrian areas, you need to have the pedestrian area district kind of go around. So like if we were to, brush this around then what we could do is upgrade some of them to pedestrian areas it really just increases that walkability and it also increases the foot traffic which for streets is how you determine the amount of value and so if you can get more foot traffic out you know you get your restaurants going 
then it really helps to kind of boost the value. So I don't want to focus on any of these through streets. I want to do these smaller ones. And then because we have that now, what we want to do is add in our service plazas. So we'll come in here. Let's try to go down here. I think that this would be good. So we'll go like this. That way we can push it all into one area, which would be good. You know, that actually looks really cool. I like the train kind of going right next to it. I think that looks fantastic. And then we'll probably just come through and do a couple little small trees around it. Nothing too crazy. All right, so now what we can do is go into the unique buildings tab. And I think what we're going to utilize is more of these, uh, this um, modern Japan content creator pick stuff. I want to do this station department store. I think, again, this is a cool building. Kind of blends in. I like that it's taller. And then let's go ahead and look for another one that's going to really kind of fit in here. So district office, maybe we will do this small office building. I think that could be good. Yeah, you know what? I think that that looks awesome. And then what we will do is do some paths around, probably even do some parking if we can fit it. I don't know if we're going to be able to, but we'll go like that. And you know what? No, I, th I think we'll forego the parking. What we'll do is some trees around. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. And then we can do a small fence around that. Let's go ahead and do a small fence around this side as well. Voila. And then we'll do or just a couple of these trees. I like these ones here. We'll go like that. Bring these down as well. Just makes it look a little more manicured. You can see we're getting a lot of people coming in here, which is great. I really like this top area too. I think that this is an awesome asset. This is probably my favorite metro station now i like that a lot but i think overall this is looking pretty good we're definitely still kind of suffering over here we really don't have any growth at all in our low density which is kind of frustrating but this again this is something that i experienced in my little build and so like this this little area seems to be going our uh, wall to wall is doing good just our mid-century modern all right and so while we're waiting for the rest of it to grow out let's go ahead and do our university over here and I was kind of thinking we were going to be a little bit lower on university availability at this point, but I think it's good to get one over here. So what I want to do, we're going to do this high capacity university. We are going to bring a road in. We're going to go like this. And then we're going to cut it across, go like that. And then let's go ahead and do the grounds just like that. And I want to get a couple little sporting venues in here. So we'll go like this. Let's go ahead and go to our parks get some of these down so it looks like the baseball is going to be a little too tight so let's do the community soccer we'll go like that and then let's see if we can get community football it looks like they're all going to be a little too tight so at least we got the soccer so then we will do a sports hall and gymnasium let's go ahead and do a little pooling area you know and this is something that we could actually do over here so we'll do a community pool in there and then let's go ahead and do one over here this is something that I completely forgot. Um, for low density, a lot of times I'll do these community pools and it just really helps to boost up the land value so that more people move in. So this should actually really help out a lot with getting growth, those community pools, because they really boost land value a lot. So you can already see the land value is substantially higher. And over here, we should start getting some growth too. So I think because I did the wall to wall, it's actually going to turn all of our low density into wall to wall. So I don't want to do that. I want it to be mid-century modern. And so we are going to bring that back. And that's something that you want to be, be mindful of. Um, if you mix things together, then they won't tend to uh, work. So because I had the mid-century modern on, um, but also the wall-to-wall, -wall, it was kind of, probably kind of confused. But now at least we'll hopefully get our wall -to -wall, our mid-century moderns in there. So we got this going. Let's go ahead and connect up our path. And then let's do just a couple small parks. Let's do a regular plaza right next to it. You know, I think that looks pretty good. And then we will, um, let's do another park in here just to kind of fill in the space. Yeah, that space looks awkward. Maybe we'll get rid of that. And what we'll do is put in just a small little bit of commercial. I think that that could be good yeah, if we go like that. Cause then that way we can kind of fill it in, which would be good. But now we got the university in here, which is good. So we should really help to boost up the area, especially since it's so far from our schooling area. We do have that train line, which does provide pretty good access to the university. But in my test builds, I was kind of having issues with um, university availability. And so that's why I'd kind of thought about it in the first place. But now we have our mid-century modern, modern buildings coming in. And this is, I think for housing, for the low density, this is one of my favorites. I think these houses look great. I really like the mid-century kind of feel, the grass and the pools and everything. And then we have our self-sufficient ones coming in over here, which is fantastic. We should finally start getting our low density in. 
We still need to come through and do our paths and then do some trees and stuff to kind of butter it up. So I think what I'm gonna do, I know there's still a lot empty, but I know that once I start detailing, a lot of this is gonna come in. So I'm gonna do a path following all the way down these little corridors. I'm gonna have it go over the streets and then we're gonna provide a little bit more connectivity between these two sides because right now it's just these two bridges and then this one pedestrian bridge. And then I'm gonna come through and do a lot of trees and just kind of butter it up, make it look a little bit better. I was kind of looking at this servicing services building and I think it may be out of place for this area. And so I'm probably gonna come back through here and re remove this as well and put something else there. So I'm gonna jump into a detailing time-lapse. I hope you guys enjoy and I will catch you guys on the other side. All right, and here we are. And so overall, the city's doing pretty good. We really don't have too many notifications anymore. We have a couple bit of, a little bit of abandonment. Like I did end up coming back in here and kind of rebuilding this out. But overall, our new area is doing pretty good. We did have some trash related issues for a little bit, but it does seem to be leveling out. You can kind of tell with these how when they're fully built up this is just such a cool vibrant looking neighborhood i really like the look of this a lot i like the overall appeal of this like you have the whole sectioned areas like if you you know say there's like a young adult family that had some kids and they wanted to be in a single family home they could live over here maybe you have like a 20 something that's single and they want to live in you know a high-rise apartment apartment or something or maybe you have an elderly that's trying to retire and they want to live in you know like a small mid-rise apartment and so there's really something for everybody 
And that's what these whole neighborhoods are about. And that's kind of the whole secret to this is if you can keep your roads, roads and your streets, streets, then what you do is you create a more vibrant area. And then if we can open up our zoning a little bit in the in North America, it's really common just to have single family homes. If we can open it up to more mixed uses or high rises, it's really going to help us to have a more vibrant area. We're going to really allow people of all age groups to be able to live in one area rather than kind of segmenting it off into into different areas. And so overall, I really like the look at this a lot. I like the little parks that we did. I like the trees. I like that we got this university in here. I did end up doing the tall burials, kind of flanking these roads in here. And then I did those paths, like I was saying, kind of going over just to provide that the, you know, the pedestrian bridges across the street, but then also to provide a, a nice clean bike path going all the way down. Cause that's one of the good, good parts about these standard paths is these are bike paths as well, which is fantastic. Overall, I think this was a huge success. Go ahead and let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. If you enjoyed this episode, you will definitely enjoy the episode on your screen. And thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys on the next one.